Hi everyone, welcome to Now I See on CYC. I'm Anna Choi. Now I See is a dedicated program that opens up the lives and insights of those that have become Christian. Today, my guest would be Stephanie Levera. Welcome, Stephanie. Thanks for joining us today. So, tell us a little bit about yourself. Hi, Anna. So, I'm Stephanie and I'm 23 years old. I'm a music teacher and I was born in Australia and my parents come from Sri Lanka and now I'm a, an Orthodox Christian. So tell us a little bit about yourself before you became a Christian. I guess it's, it's hard to know where to begin. Um, we think, I think like everyone else, you have your passions and your dreams and your hopes and you want to be I think part of growing up, you're, you're learning your, your place in the world and, and where I belong, especially growing up in Australia as, as a woman, as uh, someone that appears to be Sri Lankan, um, there's a lot of feelings of not, not belonging and sometimes it was challenging growing up uh, and there are various struggles that you face. Um, where when you experience all, all the kinds of love um, in, that humanity has and sometimes you find that it's not perfect um, even from those who are closest to you um, but I've, I've obviously had a lot of love and support around me all my life and that, that has contributed each day to bringing me closer to God and but yeah if I'm being Life before being a, a Christian, I think Christ has always been in my life somewhere in the background. I'm, I might not have acknowledged that it was Christ the whole time, but I think there was something um, at some point in my life I felt I did get something out of. Um, I was raised Catholic, so I went to a Catholic school and I learned all these, um, yeah, we, we had Bible study. I took it for granted though, I didn't listen or I'd start arguments <laughs> with teachers. Um, but I, I, I'm thankful for that experience of being given space to question and I, I respect my teachers for allowing me to voice my opinion. So I was questioning God and Christ and you know, is, is Jesus, I said, well, maybe Jesus was just a man and whether he's God, I can't tell you. I remember saying that in year 12, like publicly at a retreat. and. It's almost emba it's embarrassing looking back, but I'm thankful that my teachers gave me space, and that's what I needed. I think uh, was that space to question and to give, um, yeah, to give voice to the doubts that I had in my mind. And when I was looking around, I thought, I think sometimes Christians weren't real enough for me, and I was starting to be put off by some of the the ways they related to people I guess it wasn't what I thought a Christian would be and um, I've had some negative experiences which which now have been turned into very wonderful experiences and they've been transformed through God but yeah so I think Christ plays a life a, a part in all of our lives whether we know him to be Christ or not. And, but before I had really accepted him, it was definitely searching. I, you know, I was vegetarian for a few years and very much into Buddhism. And when I finally decided uh, to become Orthodox Christian, uh, my friends were joking with me, being like, Steph, is there a religion you haven't been yet? Um, <laughs> so it was a bit, <laughs> a bit awkward, but I, I feel like God had kind of prepared me through my spiritual explorations. I did this, um, this silent meditation course where you sit there for 10 days and you meditate 11 hours a day and you eat a vegetarian diet and you live in a segregated community. And I feel like this was still preparing my way to, uh, yeah, to, to orthodoxy even because there are themes of this which I can relate to so we like to spend time in contemplation um, <laughs> the fasting, fasting <laughs> that's <right. laughs> that's a that's a great time and it trained me and it it came into this essential truth I guess which a lot of uh, Eastern spirituality 
seems to be aware of, you know, this idea of, you know, you don't want to stuff your stomach with food and all of that. So I felt like there was a connection already and a bit of a familiar, familiarity when I came um, to know Orthodoxy. Yeah. Did you want to share some of your negative experiences with Christians before? Well, this is during university and there was just a situation where, well, as a school teacher, you need to do a, um, a work experience, a practicum. And the supervising teacher I had was married to an Anglican minister and the way she treated me was not Christian. I was very angsty about this, thinking, oh, this, you know, this person, she's calling herself a Christian mm -hmm. and um, she's treating me like this. And uh, it was a period of massive failure for me. And um, I think that ended up being a period of six that was transformed into a period of success. Um, because, because of this failed prac at this particular school, um, it actually caused my first encounter with orthodoxy and that was in the Greek um, I was sent to a Greek Orthodox school to redo my prac and that's when I first experienced the Divine Liturgy and I still remember um, leaving the Mass, this, so it was the start of term and all the kids were together in, in the church um, and I left feeling like I'd been at a wedding. I was so filled with joy and my supervising teacher then, you know, she was driving me back and I was eating like the Greek equivalent of Oba. <laughs> and um, I, I was like, oh, that was so peaceful, so tranquil. And at this point I wasn't, I, I didn't, um, I wasn't particularly into Christianity. I was off doing my meditation and that sort of thing. New age spirituality, positive thinking and good auras and vibes and whatever. Um, but that was something so real and something I, I thought about, like I, I just kind of thought, oh, well, that was a good vibe or whatever. Um, and that was, this kind of prepared me in some way, because a couple of months later, that was my first contact with um, the Coptic Orthodox Church. So I was at uni and um, there was a man there from from the church, she was handing out gospels, and I, I was kind of like, "Oh, so you know, where, where are you from, and what 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 is this?" Um, and he was like, "Well, we're from the Coptic Orthodox Church," and so I was like, "Oh, well, I know Greek Orthodox is that kind of a thing," and yeah, and so that that happened. Yeah. So you mentioned that you received the gospel. Had did that in any way affect you at all? Did you take it back home and read it, open it up? It's actually a really funny story about why I was there that day at university. Um, and I think it will give you some insight into what my life was like before Christ. Um, I had moved out of home because I was on my independence trip. Uh, and while I was living in an apartment, which I really couldn't afford, I, I didn't have Wi-Fi. So it was on a Saturday morning at uni and I desperately, I just needed internet. So I came to uni to the library and that's where I was set up. Um, you know, with, with Subway sandwiches and um, with Gospels. And he offered me chocolate and Gospels. And for the first time in my life, I said no to chocolate and yes to the Gospel. And I just thought, oh, you know, I haven't read one of these in a while. I'll, you know, see what this is about. So I walked into the library and did as much of my assignment as I could. And then I decided to start procrastinating. And this was the Gospel of John. I read the entire Gospel of John. and. I started reading it and I couldn't, it was so, something really, um, I can't explain it, it was kind of, it spoke to me and I, I understood what it meant. It was talking about the light and the darkness and how we'd rather have our, our deeds, we don't want them to be revealed by the light and I was just, I was really relating to this and how the you know, because, you know, with all my new age, hippie, spirituality, whatever I was thinking, I was kind of thinking, yes, light, like we need to bring more light into the world. And this, this makes a lot of sense right now. Um, but there was something very, it just resonated with me, the gospel. It really res, and it's still one of my favorite canonical gospels to today. Like it's the best gospel of John. Um, so I walked out of the library and was still there. 
um, and he had told me like you know just come back if you want to chat and so I, I decided I did um, I also was interested in a sandwich <laughs> um, but aside from that I came back and funnily enough there had been a couple of people who were now congregating around Ashraf and his table um, there was it, it does sound like a bit of a joke now when I'm trying to say in my head but there was a person who was Jewish um, a, an agnostic and then there was myself and they were having a, a you know a discussion about the nature of God and myself I have I, I, I do like to start a few arguments and I do like to I, I was on the debating team in school um, so I was very interested in this conversation and I hadn't really decided um, what I was representing or if I was going to yeah what angle I was going for um, but yeah I just kind of blew in on the conversation <laughs> and put in my two cents and um, it was very strange and then you know that, that eventually dispersed and uh, was very adamant with me and kind of said oh you know what you're coming to our dinner on Friday we're running a dinner um, international students everyone's welcome you know come and speak English with our friends and it's a good opportunity um, you can be a good Christian leader guidance person for us and I was kind of like look I don't know about the Christian side of things um, but if there's food and you know company friends that's I'm happy to to do that um, and yeah so I signed up and I went to that dinner on Friday and it was that's I think that was like another taste of just pure love like feeling all of this love they threw a huge feast and um, yeah, just to see all the love of the priests and um, all the people that were serving. Um, and this is what made me fall in love with the church. It was just these simple acts, you know, people driving me home and caring. Um, and um, yeah, so each week I would I'd go to this and then slowly I was getting curious. Well, my first impression of the church it was beautiful like there were little children running around random kids and families um, it was late at night yet there was such a buzz in the church and I thought like this place is so alive um, and it was more than just the fact there were lots of people there it felt um, just like warm and squishy just all of those good things um, wholesome and yeah so I kept going and helping although I really wasn't helping I was I feel like I was getting so much more we did food and then I started getting curious about the services that were happening in the church there was incense um, and sometimes yeah then eventually I was uh, curious uh, I was asking him also like what can I come to a mass am I allowed <laughs> and he was like yep yeah, sure but the only thing is I'm on the roster for um, for the 6 a.m. Arabic Mass this Sunday and I was like yes I will be there so I rocked up and um, it was so I still can't get over this but I went there and um, there was a lovely lady who was translating for me and she just seemed to explain so beautiful like I felt like I was really there and she was explaining about um, how the saints come and pray with us and the uh, you know the angel that comes during the liturgy and we send and it was just so um, so perfect I thought I felt so so spoiled to have someone there sitting there translating for me um, and being a music teacher you know of course all the hymns and the chants that was fascinating um, yeah so you mentioned um, you were experimenting with meditation for a couple of years. What was lacking from that? Well, I have to say there are some benefits to it, um, but essentially it was there was a self-awareness and there are psychological things that you learn about yourself, um, but it was lacking for a couple of reasons. So I think. The morality behind it was good, you know, I wasn't drinking at certain times and I wasn't, um, yeah, just like the five Buddhist precepts, I guess, you were fo I was following those. But then sometimes it would be for 
it would almost become a pride thing like oh yeah that's right I'm vegetarian I'm not going to eat meat and like look at you you're eating meat how could you do that there's dead dead bodies on your plate and all of that um, so it nearly became like a negative thing yeah it was and it was um, it was so inconsistent like it was so up and down and just since becoming Christian it's like I'm allowed to embrace that like I'm allowed to feel sad I don't need to pretend I had it all worked out and I was enlightened and that I can control my anger it's like okay no like that's I'm going to fall and get back up again whereas um, sometimes the aim of some of these kinds of meditation there, there are hundreds many but sometimes the aim is to achieve a perfection by yourself that you can't you can't heal yourself and you can't fix yourself um, I kept looking for places to um, fix myself or help myself, but you can't help yourself. That, that's the idea. And so when you surrender to, to God, um, that, that's when you can find a real healing. So unfortunately, we have run out of time today. Thank you so much for coming in. Please tune into our next episode on Now I See on CYC. I'm Anna Choi. God bless.